You know, I've been around Washington for a long time, and I'm always really inspired by the young faces that are here at CPAC. There are so many college students from around the country, and that's just fabulous. And because when I look at the future of conservatism, I want to win. So today, for the first time, I'm going to reveal the political truths that I've learned. It comes down to this. To win, you have to be more than right. You better be relevant. I know we're right. You know we're right. But our job is to make that fact relevant to America. Because the enemy of conservatism is not liberalism, it's irrelevance. The enemy of freedom is not oppression, it's indifference. If people don't care, no matter how right you are, your cause is dead. Your mission and the duty of the conservative movement today is to make both parties more relevant and more responsive to the American people. So, so I'm going to reveal the eternal political truths that I've learned over the years about relevance. Political truth number one, a politician at a hearing is a contradiction in terms. And here's an example. A few weeks ago in Washington, D.C., the city council held a town hall meeting about whether to repeal the Washington, D.C. gun ban, the gun ban that is gripping this town in a stranglehold for the last 30 years. I say, and I think you'll agree with me, it's outrageous that these proud streets in Washington, D.C., where Jefferson and Lincoln once walked, are among the most dangerous, filthy, crime-infested streets in America. Well, <laughs> D.C. Congressional Delegate Eleanor Norton, Eleanor Holmes Norton, came to the hearing. But unfortunately, she wasn't there to do any listening. She came to lecture her subjects about how they needed to keep the gun ban, that they were better off without the Second Amendment. She thought the NRA was irrelevant. What she didn't know, and it's true in neighborhoods all over the United States of America, is that her district in Washington, D.C. is full of NRA members. Watch her face here when she finds out just how wrong she was. So wherever a resident may stand on guns, and there are a few residents of the District of Columbia who uh, would prefer to see our gun laws repealed, have made common cause with the NRA. Yeah, I'm a yeah, very few of you. I've been in Congress 15 years. Y'all look real strange to me, most of you. Now, uh, <laughs> I don't know where you came from. All right. Pipe down. Yeah, I know. Pipe down? Who does she think she is? You know, Delegate Norton, when we're talking about our constitutional freedoms, we will not be told to pipe down. I... And I don't care how strange your constituents look to you. We are Americans. We are free, and we will not pipe down. Here's political truth number two. A tyrant doesn't have to run a country to be a tyrant. It can be a mayor or even a police chief, like in New Orleans in the wake of Hurricane Katrina with absolutely no conceivable authority anywhere to do so, Mayor Ray Nagin and Police Chief Eddie Compass declared the Second Amendment in New Orleans null and void. They ordered armed squads to go door to door, house to house, confiscating lawful guns from lawful gun owners by the thousands. Here's a glimpse of that untold story, starting with Chief Compass on tape right here, who decrees we will take all weapons. Watch this.
No one will be able to be armed. We yes, will sir. take all yes, weapons. No, it was a human drama with emotions and tensions running high. Patty Connie is still trying to recover physically and emotionally. They really did a number on me. From the day police forced her from her home. It was traumatic. All of a sudden, they were banging on the front door, the side door, and the back door, and they said, let us in. Patty tried to explain. She was on dry land, she had plenty of food and water, and didn't want to abandon her dogs. But it didn't matter. If you see six or eight police that look like linebackers pushing you in a corner, you're, you're in shock. I'm saying, look at all my food. I got plenty of food. They kept pushing me back, pushing me back, and ended up like this. Then, Patty showed them a small revolver she was carefully holding in the palm of her hand. A camera crew was there to capture what unfolded next. I said, it's not even loaded. And I dropped it on the floor. You got a gun. Well, they punched me in the face. Look at my black and blue marks. Look at, look at what they did to me. They dragged me out of here. How could this happen in, in America? You know, for 20 years, I predicted the day would come, the day when your freedom is only as good as some tyrant says it is. And they had plenty of men in body armor with M16s to prove it that day in New Orleans. First, let me tell you what NRA did. We took Nagin and Compass to federal court to stop the seizures and get their guns back. That, and the court held that what they did in New Orleans was unconstitutional and ordered them to stop. But they've done nothing since then but lie and stall and duck and dodge until two weeks ago when the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of Louisiana granted NRA's motion and held Mayor Ray Nagin and new Chief Warren Riley in contempt of court. And I bet you didn't read that on the front page of the New York Times or Washington Post. And we're not going to stop until we get every gun owner their gun back in New Orleans. I promise you. My next political truth is this. The United Nations is an unelected, unaccountable, and all too often unethical gang of unnecessary, underhanded, un-American thugs. They think they know what's best for you. And believe me, the Second Amendment isn't it. When they ban guns in England, gun crime shot up. When they ban guns in South Africa, in Canada, in Australia, gun crime went up. Given that record of stellar success, the United Nations is now determined to ban civilian ownership of guns worldwide. These guys can't pour water out of a boot without the directions written on the heel, but they think they know better than our founding fathers? You know, and this is what really gets me. The United Nations represents the grandchildren of the enslaved people that our grandfathers liberated in World War II. Our families fought and died for their freedom. How dare they come to our shores and tell us how much freedom we as Americans should have. Yeah. Let me show you right now who's leading the UN parade. It starts with Rebecca Peters. She led Australian's gun confiscation program. She then went to New York City to work for George Soros at the Open Society Institute. Now she's over at the UN pushing their global gun ban and